Welcome everyone. It is just amazing to believe it's already week six and I don't know where the time went, but it obviously has after this week. We just have two more weeks. You have done an outstanding job in doing many things uh, that have been asked for you and I want to try to help you with some of the things that have been submitted that we're really just not on task. Not necessarily on this one, of course, but I always make announcements. So if you look at the announcements, they're always going to help you with what to submit and how to submit it in order to get the most points. I have entitled this one Systems Thinking Project, and that's obviously what you're going to be doing. And guidelines and template, the first part is going to be what you're required to do. And then I'm going to give you the best way to do it. So if you take a look at what's in the rubric, this is pretty much it. But I've added this over here to make sure to paraphrase and cite your sources. So when you're doing a system thinking and collection, you should have a source for each one of these things that you are talking about. Remember, put it into your own words so that everything comes out just, just fine in here. So you have the five things to do. Then this is a scenario that you're talking about for the warehouse. And what I've given you is a what to submit. Also remember, you have a 250 to 500 word document. So you want to describe everything that's in there. What happens if it's 249 words? Not a real problem, but if it's 80 words, then we know that you haven't really done a full job in there. So you want to try to do this the very best that you can. So I've given you some help on your definition, system thinking. And again, I put in a paraphrase, your definition. And also remember to do an insight, in-text citation. Now, in this particular case, since it's not really a paper, if you want to do the full citation in the actual definition right underneath it, that's fine too. So you're going to be doing all five of these. Then there's a Visio map of the order process, and I'm going to actually create that for you. I've broken it down step by step. So I'm going to do a simple one if you want to do fancy items in there and as opposed to the little boxes and arrows that I have. So you can do that as well. So we have warehouse, associate, and all the steps. So we're going to have a 14 step, and it goes right from the very beginning from creating the order, following straight through until you get a review of the order. Often, if you've ordered something from Amazon, you're going to see that you'll get an email, please review your order. And here are your relationships. I recommend a casual loop diagram. I believe it's much, much easier than a stock and flow. If you wanna do stock and flow, that's fine. There's plenty of them out there on YouTube. This is one that I found that works pretty easy and it gives the pluses and minuses in there and what's going to happen. So you should have already understand that. But this is an excellent, it is from another university and it's with a different scenario and she gives you step by step on how to do it. So then in your 250 word document, you're going to be doing these other things as well. So you're going to be submitting a one word document and two Visio documents in there. So again, make sure that you submit the actual Visio files. If you are using the VDI, then if you call tech support, they can help you as well. And it also ask you um, or encourage you to read um, the words that I have posted over here. And hopefully that will lighten up your life. So we have the customer creates order. We have the warehouse receives order. And we're just going to do that step by step in here. So I have Visio open. And I'm going to create a blank diagram. Which is basic. And so I'm going to use the basic shapes. And you can do all kinds of decorative shapes in here but you really don't really need that here graph and set you really don't need that here but anytime you want more shapes you can always go in here flow charting is good here's business and things of that nature but for here let's just use the plain good old 
old-fashioned basic shapes and then you can experiment as you want so all I'm really going to be doing is the square and I'm just going to go step by step in here and I'm going to start with the customer creates the online order so I will put in here and you can edit the text very easy there's different ways to do it I like to right click and choose edit text and then I'll put creates online order now if you want them on separate lines then just obviously hit the enter key and that looks good we're going to click on this over here and if you want to change the shape style, you can do that as well from all the different ones here. I'm just going to stick with the fancy blue over here. So what I want to do now is I can do copy and paste or I can just drag another square. So I'm going to go right over here and drag another square. Notice that I have this lines, the three lines that will help me add it uh, and keep it together. And we'll just keep adding them together so that's one two three four and five so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to put in the boxes first and then align them so I want to do one below and two below and three below then we need to do five more over here so we're going to do one two three four five and i'm using these green guides to kind of help me align them Then we just have two more. So I'm going to create one here. And then I'll create one here. So the rest is just filling in the steps in here. So this one's create online order. Then the next one is going to be warehouse computer receives order. I spelled that wrong Let's try one more time and then you'll just list all the steps and then you can put any type of arrow that you want in here there's also arrow shapes here that you can use so we don't really want a simple double one we can just use a striped arrow you can whatever you want now notice that it is too big so you're going to want to make it smaller. Uh, if you don't like that, you can just use a connector. But that connector shows the direction as well. So there's many different ways that you can do it. So now bear in mind, if you use this arrow here, you want to go back to the pointer tool. And instead of just keep dragging it and then have to change the the size you're just going to copy and paste it and then you can put it over here if you want to line everything make sure that you have the pointer tool selected and then you can drag around it and if you go to position and align so let's go to align you can align everything if they're in the same uh, size you can just click on align middle And you can also make sure that if you click on align, you can align top, so on. Uh, if you want to make them a little bit uh, where they're all the same, you, in other words, the distance between them, you can distribute horizontally, and that should give the spacing between them, each one the same. So that's all you need to do is then just right click here and submit um, the edit text in here, type in the text. If you want to put some kind of title on it, 
you can just click text and you can maybe draw a little text box and you can put your name or title whatever you want to do project whatever that you would like to do as well is just fine and that's all you really need to do so basically you're just showing the flow in here so that is where uh, you have to do that make sure that you save it and download it and let's go back to the announcement see if I missed anything and I highly recommend that you watch this video and I highly recommend that you create a casual loop diagram in there I believe it'll be much 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 easier for you so I'm hoping that this helps you please of course let me know if you email me or send me a chat I am on the East Coast if you're in California when you're sending something at 7:30 at night it's 10 30 where I'm at so I don't know where all of you are but I just want to let you know I am on the East Coast and so I may not get back to you to the next day but I will do every bit I can to get back to you as quickly as I can if for some reason I don't get back to you within 24 hours it just means I never received your email or somehow it fell through the cracks and I just forgot about it so please forgive me and just send me another email say hey I emailed you but you have not responded yet here's what I need for you to do and I will look for it so that is everything I hope that this helps you and I truly enjoy working with the rest of you so that is it